So in this vlog, we're going to be talking about defending a former romantic partner's claim against your home. I'm attorney Dan Marr. I've been an attorney in Nashua, New Hampshire for approximately 35 years, a little more than that. And I've been here at this firm for that period of time. And I've done a lot of real estate litigation and, and resolutions and contracts. And today we're going to be talking about the situation where you have a you have somebody that is living with you, a romantic partner. It could be a matter of you're in your perhaps your thirties and one of you owns a home and you get into a relationship and that the romantic partner moves in with you, or you one of you buys the property and the other one doesn't get their name on the deed for whatever reason. We'll talk about that in a moment. And they leave. Or you could be in a situation where you're older and perhaps one or both of you in the relationship or divorced or widowed and you decide not to go into a relationship of a marriage type. Obviously with if you're married, there's property settlement rules in regards to a family law. The statute is very clear on that as to how it deals with it. and there's a clear structure. Not so much <clears throat> when you don't have that and one of you is on the deed and the other one is not. If you are both on the deed, there's certain rights. There's something called a partition action. We'll talk about that in more detail. We first start off with the premise that under New Hampshire law, there isn't any common law marriage in this situation. Common law marriage has a very limited role in New Hampshire where if, th if two of you have been cohabitating together for con consecutively three years and acknowledging each other as husband and wife and have a general reputation in the community as husband and wife, <clears throat> then you can have common law spouse rights if one of you dies. So in this situation where one of you moves out, common law marriage doesn't apply. So that has, there is no common law marriage in New Hampshire in regards to this. There can be an issue as to um, when not you have some type of equitable partnership. Um, there's something called constructive trust and the likes that the other person can make a claim for. But you really have to get into, delve, delve deep into the facts to find out this is more than just a living relationship where you're sharing the expenses while you're living together. <clears throat> particularly when I'm defending one of these cases and there's the former romantic partner is saying, well, wait a minute here. I was paying half the mortgage. We had a mortgage or we had property taxes. We had other things. I was paying half or maybe even more than half of that. I would turn around and if I'm defending the person that owns the property that his name is on the deed with the other person not having their name on the deed, my position would be that's called rent. And it's effective to a judge if that's a situation where they're both living together and if if one of them was paying $1,400 a month and that's what they would get, that's what they'd have to pay for a nice um, one or two bedroom apartment, and frankly more than that now in 2023 when I'm doing this blog, then the court will consider that factor and, and that sharing of expenses is really had to live somewhere and you're living there. It gets more involved if the person that is not on the deed has a <clears throat> some type of understanding with you as to why they weren't on the deed. Perhaps it was a situation where they had creditor problems and you both didn't want their name on the deed because you didn't want to somebody to attach the property, but you both considered it as both of your property. That type of evidence would be something I would have to work on if I'm defending against defending you. I'd have to fer ferret that out and be able to present our position in regards to that case. That would be an argument if that was there. If that was um, an argument by the other side, that would certainly be something to have to be addressed. If the other side paid a large down payment or built out an addition to the house or did something like that, the question would be, why did they do that? I had some situations where people did put expansions onto the property, but they did it for their own personal interests. While they were living there, they wanted this type of um, improvement to the property for their particular use, their own self-centered use, not to the benefit of the romantic partner in that situation, facts matter. In any of these litigations, there are, there's equitable considerations that the courts are going to consider, both either the circuit court probate division or the superior court would be dealing with such a case. And in that situation, the judge would look at the facts. <clears throat> you want to cover all the facts. You don't want to say some general rules of, of thumb. That doesn't apply. You really want to get into the facts. You have to get into them in real detail. Um, so if you're in a situation like that, you can contact me. I'm happy to help. I'm at, I've litigated these cases on both sides. I'm at Hamlin Kerrigan, 
That's 603-883-5501. That's 603-883-5501, Dan Marr. Or you can check out our website, hamker.com. That's hamker.com. Look forward to talking to you.